People have always asked me for years for a how-to video on how to install one of my Knight Rider lights for a Trans Am. That was always hard to do because my lights were already installed and I can't really do a fresh install on a car that's already been installed. So I'm going to do a quick install video here. I'm going to keep it kind of quick on the steps. I'm not going to show drilling every single rivet like some people do. I don't want to bore people to death, but I'll cover a few little questions and things like that. And then we'll kind of go through, show the mat, how to actually install it and how to wire it. So let's begin. One of the questions I always get is, does this light block the ram air? Well, if you've ever looked at a stock ram air hood, there's multiple baffles inside this hood. And you'll see as I'm removing the baffles on the install. But when you look when it's actually installed, now this might be hard to see, the light actually sits back on the, on the inside, probably about two and a half inches on both sides. So you're still getting a lot of ram air flow. And I do have an option in the instruction manual to actually open up the bottom of the rear plate so you have Probably a little more ram air floating you actually get from the factory. So first, real quick, let's talk about what gives you the extra couple, you know, 20 or so horsepower when you have a ram air car. Is it the actual hood scoops that are blocked off by multiple baffles, which, I don't know, in my opinion, don't really have a whole lot of flow? Or is it the fact that the hood is actually taller on a WS6 and the actual air box is about two inches tall, the opening? You're still getting air flow through the bottom. You compare it to a stock Trans Am, Airbox is what about half an inch tall, so you're getting a ton of extra flow just due to the tall airbox. Probably not so much from the hood because you will see as I start moving the baffles. But as I said, there is an option the rear plate you can always cut off about two inches in the bottom, right below where the light bar sits. That way, light enters through the front and it comes right through the hood anyway, and probably has more flow than what it does from the factory. Here's a few things you're going to need for your install. Now I used to supply all this, but I started getting requests, you know, can you send me blue wire loom, red wire loom, how about a different switch, different color cable tie mounts. It's like I can't really stock, you know, hundreds of different colors and parts and everything. So it's easier. I drop my price and then everyone can buy what they want. So what you're going to need, you're going to need two different colors, 18 gauge wire, like so. I'd always go black with one and red, blue, purple, whatever with the other one. They usually cost about $6 for a 35 foot roll of each color. So one roll of each, 35 feet, you have plenty. You're gonna need a toggle switch, an on off. This is a micro, two position one. You only get one position on off. You can get anything you want, get a light up one, get one with a rocker cover, they're cheap. I mean, I got 10 of these for $3 on eBay. You need an inline fuse holder. These again are about $4. About a three amp fuse is more than enough because these lights do not pull a lot of juice. Always put the fuse holder in line with your hot wire, the, the 12 volt positive, and put it within 12 inches of the actual source. So if you're coming off your battery, hook this wire directly to the battery and then the other side to the wire going to the Knight Rider light. Cable tie holder. These are adhesive. They stick under the hood. I show, I'll show you how the uh, wires come down. The cable tie goes through the slot and then you just basically cable tie to hold your wires in place. You can get these in any color. Again, this is another one where people kept asking for different colors and it's like I can't really buy every color in the world. So it's easier if everyone just buys their own. You need about a dozen cable ties to go through your cable tie holder. And preferably some wire loom. You don't have to. You can have the bare wires coming down the inside hood. It all depends on what you do with your car. If you do car show stuff like that. But you can get this wire loom. Any color, it's usually about a dollar a foot. So everything combined, switch, depending on everything that you get, you're looking at about $30 in parts. Okay, here's the first step to install a Knight Rider light. First thing, you need to remove the front baffles that are inside here behind the grill. So to do that, you have to grill, drill out the eight rivets. There's two here, here, there's two on the bottom over here, and then there are two on the other side over here. So to drill out a rivet, all you really need is a drill bit, just a little bigger than the hole. Use light power. You don't have to go crazy. You see this, the head spin and you're done. And then you move on to the next one and so on. All right. all right, you need to remove the grills on here. Basically it's just a standard T15 Torx.
Don't lose your screws. You'll be reusing these guys later. And it just pulls right out. Next part you have to remove is this rear panel right here. There are about nine rivets all the way around that you have to drill out. The same as the front. No different. You just kind of get your drill in there. And so we go. Until it spins. And then the head pulls right off. That one did not pull right off. Okay, to push the rivet the rest of the way through like these guys. One eighth drill bit. Right in the middle. Until it pushes through. Now, the hood is fiberglass, so you don't have to paint it. It's not going to rust. But if you want to, a little touch up paint your body color, or maybe get some little black plugs going there. Whatever your choice. The back piece is ready to pull out. You can see it's loose. You just kind of move it around. It's a little tricky. And it comes right out. Now, you'll be using this piece. Okay, the inner baffles, basically, you have to push them out. Now, they are glued in there. The rivets are out. You can see I busted this one free. You just have to kind of work at it. They'll pop out. Sometimes, you know, you go in there with a flathead screwdriver and pry them out, but they will come out. Here's the rear piece you removed. You want to make a line an inch and a half from the top on both sides, and you're going to have five inches total point to point. So to center it, you can go off this little circle cast or molding part right there. And I actually go right off the top of the circle to two and a half both directions. And you want to drill a hole. I have a 1564 drill bit, but any drill bit, you know, close to it is good. Enough. Doesn't have to be perfect because the light does overlap on both sides and you'll never be able to tell if you're not perfect. You could be a little up, a little down, in and out. It will not make a difference. And that's it for that part. So the light is going to mount in the hood with the wires towards the top. You could technically go upside down, but the way the control box is staggered, you're going to have it like this. Wires on the top part, nothing on the bottom. Okay, you're going to want to feed it in from the back side. Now, to get the bolt to clear, you just have to kind of finagle it, you know. The thing is flexible. There we go, first side in. And then if you come around to the other side, the best way to do it is sort of have it come out the hole. So you have enough room to get the second light bar in. And now the second light bar is in. Push it back in. And it is inside the hole. So after that, now what we need to do is get the back plate in. We mount it to the plate and rivet the plate in place. Okay, the back panel is back in place. You want to mount this first. Now you can use nuts and screws, which is kind of hard, or you can use rivets. So I have a rivet in here. And you basically just pull it. And the rivet is in. Okay, now that the plate is riveted back in, I just use four or the eight. You don't have to do all eight. You have to get the bolts on the Night Rider light through the hole inside there. It's a little tricky. You don't really have much to grab onto, but it's doable. Sometimes looking from the other side is good, so that one's in. Okay, now you want to get both sides straight and even with each other. Now to push them up, now I already pushed these up. It's kind of hard to get your hand there and do it. So for this side, you kind of just come under here. I just use an extension. You can, if you got long fingers, you can do it. And just kind of push it up. And sometimes you might get caught in this clip right here. So you might want to just kind of like put a flathead behind there. Just kind of pry it away just a little bit as you're pushing from the bottom. And on the other side, same thing. I use this hole here and kind of push on an angle. If you want to get closer, you can take out the hood latch, two 10 millimeter bolts, and then you can push right through this hole. And just push them up till they're straight. Now you want to put your grills in. This side, the insides will go in like normal. Now to lock the Night Rider light in place, the outside is actually going to screw right into the Night Rider light, right into the front case. So it might sound ugly, you're going to hear cracking and all kinds of ugly stuff. And that's it. It is locked in place, it's not going anywhere. Now for the wiring part. There's a couple different ways to do this. On my car, this is an aftermarket hood, but I opted to actually drill a couple small holes in between and have the wires come out a hole on the bottom that I drilled. 
really small hole and then the, a little bit of extra slack here on the wire so that way it can fold down when you close the hood. Now that actually was really difficult to do. It was probably about two hours of fishing a little metal wire through there to try to fish these wires through, but it gives you a clean install. The other way to do it is to use the adhesive pads I showed and then you stick them on the outside and then run them down over. Now this car is a little different. I have an interior display on this car which has about an extra 20 wires I have to run so that's why there's two huge bundles of wires but on a standard install you're running two little wires it's just a small little bundle it won't look like this but this is just kind of to show that the wires run down the outside of the hood for the actual wiring hookup itself there's a lot of different ways to do it it's a two wire hookup you have to hook up your toggle switch in line in between either the positive or the negative wire now there's a lot of different spots to tap off of Probably the safest way to do it because every time you run a hot, a 12 volt wire through the firewall, there's always a chance it could short out. So you can either tap off the hot off your positive battery over here, or some people actually run it over. There's actually a, a cable here if you have cruise control that cuts across. And then you have this little terminal over here. Same thing if you run a ground, if there's many ground connections, you can run a wire. To the stud over here. I mean, there, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. I didn't really cover the wiring part because everyone kind of does it on their own. If, now, if you need to get the couple wires into the car itself, because you're going to need to do something for a toggle switch on the interior, there's two 10 millimeter bolts right here. You remove them. The actual power control module here it just slides off to the side, and then there's a grommet down inside behind there. It's kind of tough to get your hand in there, but it's it's doable. I've done it many many times. You basically fish the wire through that grommet on the inside up in here. Now this plastic panel here has two plastic clips. You literally just put your finger and pull it straight down. They'll pop right out. And then there's a metal clip up in the side here. Can't really see it too well. You pop that off. This panel comes down and then you can actually reach your hand up inside here and you can feed your wires through. Now if you're running both the wires in the interior, if you take this side panel off, the sidekick panel, there's actually a stud right here, a ground stud. You can actually put your ground wire there. there. There's a lot of different ways to type this off. For power, one popular way people do it is they actually tap off the power on the driver's side power seat, underneath the seat. You can tap off the power from your uh, radio, the yellow ignition wire. So many different ways. And then for toggle switches, it's your choice. Some people do plates down here where the traction control is. You can do a switch up here. You can do hidden switch inside your uh, ashtray here. So I kind of leave that part open because everybody likes to do their own switches, their own mods. If they want it hidden, you know, you can put a little switch right here. I mean, you can do anything you want. I even have switches down there by the uh, OB2 connector. So lots and lots of options. If you have any questions, just ask me. It's actually pretty simple.